So my story starts um, with an amazing family and parents who brought me up in the church and really emphasized the importance of having faith in God and being connected to a church and that they can help you with your faith. When I was 10 years old, I decided that I wanted to show everyone that I accepted that God died for me and that I want to follow Jesus. So while I understood the gravity of this and I was baptized and I said all of those things to the church, I kind of just lived off my parents' faith and didn't really take responsibility for my relationship with God. And that reflected as I went into middle school and I would look at other girls and think, am I as pretty as them? Am I as popular as this person? So I would compare myself to others and um, sometimes I would think, wow, I'm a lot better than that person. So I was caught up in the sin of being envious or prideful. Um, and so I had really low self-esteem because of this. Uh, I didn't really like who I was as a person. So between my seventh and eighth grade year, I went to Super Summer, and this was like a monumental summer for my life. It was a turning point in my faith, and I decided that I wanted to take initiative in my relationship with God. I wanted to take my faith to the next level. When I went home, everything about my life got better. I, my relationship with my friends improved, my uh, relationship with my family got better. The way I saw the world was completely different, a new perspective. Over the past two years, I've started getting this idea of how we can have a relationship with God. There's many different ways to describe a human to a God relationship, and this can just be one of the various ones. Slaves submit to their masters and they obey them. So we can look at that, and there's biblical evidence found throughout the Bible, but um, I specifically found Ephesians and Romans helpful. It says that, that God's will is perfect and holy, and we see this said throughout the whole Bible, and that when we follow His will, when we obey His will like a slave obeys a master, it works out and it's righteous. But if you're a slave to anything else, like a slave to envy, to pride, a slave to, and insert your sin here, then you're not a slave to God, you're a slave to sin. So look at your life and think about what you spend most of your energy on. And if it's not God, then it's sinful, it's toxic to your life. And I realized that and so for about two years, I've been thinking about how I can live being a slave to God. Um, so that said, I really encourage you to break from this bondage of being a slave to sin and accept the ironic freedom that comes with being a slave to God. Next year, as I go to college at Baylor, pledging to myself right now and now to all of you that I'm going to continue living as a slave to God and obey Him. Um, and we will see what fantastic things He has in store to add to my testimony.
Oof. Are you ready? You got to memorize? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's your story. My story? Yeah. Well, it starts with, um... You're born a, a poor black boy. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. it, actually. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the room. I'm gonna let you okay. do your thing, um, and just talk to that thing. Okay. That's your new best friend. <laughs> and then just let Lane know when you're done. All right. She's gonna crush it. <laughs> oh gosh. So, I. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name's Anna Harrington. Um, I'm a senior at Marble Falls High School.